looks like one of our development parts didn't fare too well in test. I've put it on hold for now. You can restart work from the laptop. We're going to have to go back now and make some adjustments in order to get the final numbers that we more like we were expecting from the simulation. What's up guys, welcome back to the Salvo Karimo, part number 15. And as you heard from Chris, this is not the greatest way to start off this episode. Our chassis weight, second chassis weight reduction upgrade has unfortunately failed. That we, uh, The one that we purchased in the last Grand Prix in Singapore. So which means we're going to have to uh, spend some resource points trying to fix that, which is a bit of a shame. The one positive though that we do have is the fact that um, no one else has upgraded at this particular point at this at Grand Prix. So there's no real uh, change in terms of the uh, orders. But also, um, we, ha we do have a, a, a brand new gearbox this Grand Prix because we managed to uh, end up getting the, uh, the last gearbox to last the th last six races. So uh, it means that we can, we can get a, uh, a free gearbox without taking a penalty, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. But it looks like we're probably going to have to uh, spend that time in getting that um, some resource points in repairing that uh, chassis weight reduction so that we then, we then branch out and open up all those other options that you can see on the top and bottom of the, uh, the chassis uh, side of things so things like the weight redistribution and also the tire wear but in order to do that we need some more resource points so without further ado let's get into practice for the malaysian grand prix time has come to start the first session of the race weekend it's practice for the malaysia grand prix an opportunity here then for the drivers to learn the track and learn the car and of course work out all the little kinks that show up when the teams put these cars together at the circuit Anthony Davidson, this is all very familiar to you, of course. So why don't you give us an idea as to what the drivers will be getting up to in these sessions? I'd say the first responsibility for drivers during pre-practice is in gathering data for correlation purposes, which allows the engineers to match real-life data against the simulation. Secondly, the driver then needs to dial themselves into a circuit that they may not have driven around for a full year, which is a fact that's often overlooked. And then you finally focus on the details of car setup and the tyre wear. It's critical to have a good relationship with your engineer here so they can make the right adjustments at the right time to the car that ultimately bring out the performance you're looking for. Alright, here we are in practice one, starting off with the track acclimatisation around the Sepang International Circuit. Now, if this moment was based off real life in terms of the, the calendars, then this circuit will be the, this will be the last time we would actually be racing around this circuit because, of, as, as you guys know, if you've been paying attention to F1 in real life, this circuit is no longer on the uh, F1 calendar. It has been removed from 2018 onwards. So it's a shame that the, the games don't really follow that sort of uh, trend in terms of you having the ability to actually um, customize how the, um, the calendar works. But uh, that's just one of those things. Potentially in the near future, we might be able to uh, get a bit of that as we do a little bit of a power slide into, I think, turn 10. I'm not 100% sure that. Apologies if there's a little bit of lag also going on with regards to the, some of the footage. I don't know why it is lagging a little bit, mainly because I think because it was on the last the last bits of recording I did prior to um, me switching my machines. But uh, anyways, we're now on to the uh, tire wear program. We were able to get the maximum number of available resource points from uh, track conversation. It looks like we're going to be able to uh, get do the same thing with the, uh, the tire wear program, which is absolutely fantastic. We then moved on into the race strategy. As you can see, we've already managed to achieve the... Uh, green objective and currently we are just trying to get that um, secondary objective with the um, just staying out for one lap lot and lap longer and also then trying to do those extra two laps to get a little bit more uh, data as to how the tyres will, will affect and also what sort of fuel consumption we'll be uh, doing as well in the race which will help us decide what sort of strategy we should go on for the uh, Grand Prix. In terms of actual uh, pace I'm not sure where we'll be in terms of uh, position because of the fact that we are a um, because of our lack of straight line speed and also our downfalls isn't that great as all as compared to the rest of the field but uh, we're just gonna have to see what happens anyways we now move on to the the fuel saving part of the uh, program as we as you can see we didn't manage to get the uh, maximum amount maximum amount of resource points straight away but then when we go across the line right about now we do have, we're able to do it on the second lap like which is absolutely fantastic we then move on into practice three and then we start and we're uh, just doing the uh the last practice program which is the, uh, the qualifying program and as you can see based off the, uh, the split times on the in the top right hand corner we are currently up on the uh, current uh, target lap time let's see if we can get the uh, secondary objective though on this uh, initial first lap which means we'll be able to uh, save a little bit of our gearbox and also the uh, engine components that we're currently using 
at this particular Grand Prix. But as you can see, we managed to get that, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. So that was five out of five, exactly what we needed with regards to uh, the uh, resource points. And we're going to go straight away into uh, repurchasing that uh, failed upgrade that we were supposed to get for this Grand Prix, but hoping that it will arrive in time for the Japanese Grand Prix, which is the uh, next race on the calendar. And as we head into the um, final five races of the season, goodness me, it's gone quickly. Um, hoping we can get that uh, upgrade on the car and we'll be a little bit closer to McLaren, potentially even get in front of them based off the um, the performance charts uh, if we had a quick look, at, if we saw that a little bit earlier on in, in the video. But anyways, we're now switching out the uh, older engine components so we can uh, get ready for qualifying. Sit back and put your feet up as we head into qualifying here in Kuala Lumpur. Over the next few minutes, we'll find out who's got pace in the car and who hasn't? In recent seasons, much talk has been made about tyre wear. Some say it gets in the way of the racing. Others say it's always been part of the sport. Are we going to see drivers trying to look after their tyres here or throw caution to the wind and worry about that when it becomes a problem? Tyre wear is always something you have to consider to a certain degree. Finding a good car balance that suits the circuit will help prolong the life of the tyre but it's true that some circuits, such as this one, are more challenging than others. How hard you can push them depends on your strategy and how tight the battle is around you. All right, here we are starting off qualifying with, as always, uh, Q1. As you can see, based on the weather, it looks like we're doing the qualifying session towards the end of the day, so its visibility is a little bit more uh, difficult to see in terms of the uh, actual circuit, but uh, yeah. That was a little interesting challenge that we had to overcome for this particular session. I think the actual Grand the race itself actually, though, is done a bit earlier on in the day, though, based off, um, I think, mainly because of the fact that uh, there was problems back in the, back when it was uh, set a little bit later on the day due to the fact that there was potential for sudden downpours, and that's the reason why uh, they also moved the uh, Grand Prix from the second race of the year to the uh, towards the end of the calendar temporarily until it was actually off. It's now off the calendar. Anyways, we... After uh, our second lap, we're currently sat in 17th place. Unfortunately, though, we're not really improving at the moment on our lap time on our final flying lap. So let's see if we can actually uh, find some improvement a bit later on around the lap. But as you can see, it's really close as we head up through the final corner. I am not entirely confident that we're going to actually um, get out of Q1 here as we now head up towards line. It's going to be really close. So we do manage to improve, though, and go up into 15th place. And we just about did enough actually to get into the second part of qualifying as you can see just about finishing ahead of Jolian Palmer who gets eliminated from qualifying also our rival Kevin Magnussen getting eliminated along with Lance Stroll our teammate Pascal Vellum who out qualified Van Dorn which was fantastic and obviously as I just mentioned uh, Van Dorn also getting eliminated we then moved on into Q2 and as always we're going to use the uh, the scrub set of tyres that we used at the end of to set our final lap in Q1 just so we got that lap time on the board and therefore, we have a delta to uh, compare against when we go on to the, uh, the newer set, which could be our race set if we do end up getting into the uh, final part of qualifying. As you can see, we're currently sat in 11th place, which is not a bad position to be in at uh, this particular circuit. As we now come head towards the line, we are going to improve on our lap time. We do move up into 10th, but unfortunately for us, that doesn't, we don't stay there for very long. As we now cut towards the end of the session, we get bumped down by several drivers. And we end up down in 13th place, unfortunately. So the likes of the two Toro, so the two Toro Ross has actually managed to make some big improvements and got themselves into the final part of qualifying. And also Master and Grosjean managed to uh, out-qualify, as was saying. We did, though, however, manage to out-qualify Hulkenberg and also Alonso, crucially for me, in my uh, little battle that I have with uh, McLaren. But anyways, let's see if we can take this grid position into the uh, race and see if we can get, more point, get some points back on the board. And alongside me today to talk you through all that is Anthony Davidson. And welcome again. It's good to be back in Kuala Lumpur, isn't it? A lovely country, Malaysia, lovely circuit, and a race that, that tends to be quite hard to predict. Yeah, it does indeed. There are a lot of high energy corners that make the rear tyres suffer around here. Coupled with the excessive heat, that makes it difficult to keep your tyres in the right operating window. And of course, in previous years, we've come here very early in the season which shows a potential reliability variable in there as well. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and starting alongside in P2, 
is Sebastian Vettel. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Verstappen, Valtteri Bottas, and Ricardo, Perez, Ocon, Kvyat, and Carlos Sainz. Massa, Grosjean, Asalba, and Hulkenberg, Palmer, Magnussen, Lance Stroll, and Pascal Wehrlein. Van Dorn and Fernando Alonso starts from the back of the grid. Embarrassing, really embarrassing. Thank you, Jeff. It looks like Alonso wasn't too impressed by the fact that he had to take a end, some sort of penalty. And he's now at the back of the grid behind his teammate and also our teammate. So uh, anyways, let's have a quick look at the race strategy. We're going to switch it over like we did in the uh, Singapore race where we put the harder compound tyre on first and then go for the uh, yellow ward soft tyre for the uh, second stint. But there could be an interesting factor because it looks like we may have rain right at the death, right at the death of the race or the fight in the closing stages. So... If there's a safety car that gets thrown, we may end up having to go and switch onto the uh, intermediate tyres towards the end. But if everything runs smoothly as expected, I think we might have to just play it or oh, stay on those tyres and just try and uh, or stay on the dry tyres and try and uh, ride it out as best we can. But mainly our objective here is to try and stick with as many of the cars in front of us because uh, it might be a bit of a challenge due to the fact that they're all on uh, super soft tyres, so two compounds are softer than compared to what we've got on. But we've just got to do our best with the medium tyres and hopefully they end up on the either the mediums or the yellow or the soft tyres towards the end of their stints or towards the end of their races sorry and we will be able to uh, have that pace advantage over them towards the end but anyways we're about to line up on the grid here let's get ready for the start of the Malaysian Grand Prix the rest of the grid is forming up be patient and watch for the lights Lights out and away we go. And as you can see, we kind of had a bit of a sluggish start. So we had to cut straight away to the right-hand side to prevent the runner of Palmer from going past. But it looks like he's already going to go straight past us regardless of that as we now head up towards Taiwan. One. Trying to go up the inside of several drivers going side by side, I think, with our rival Magnussen here as we go into now towards turn two. He will then have the inside line for that corner. And then hopefully we will take the inside line for turn three. It looks like he's managed to stay ahead of us for now. As we've got the two Renaults battling just behind us. We've got to keep an eye on... Both of those guys as we now head up towards turn four. Very uh, tricky braking maneuver to get right, especially on the uh, opening lap. As we try to go up the inside of Magnussen, unable to make the move stick as the two runners still go side by side as they go through the uh, turn five and turn six uh, complex. As we now come to the end of lap number one, we've got Nico Hulkenberg just behind us in 50th place. And thankfully, though, uh, we don't get uh, overtaken by him on this first lap, mainly because of the fact that there's no uh, DRS in operation. As you can see, we've got. Uh, Magnussen trying to put pressure on Fiat in front of him. So it's really trying to settle down in the first couple of laps here to uh, make sure we don't make any uh, silly mistakes or anything like that. We are on the DRS, so we're still keeping in touch with Magnussen and Fiat, though, as we are in DRS range with them. As Magnussen tries to go around the outside of the Russian, these two men, very uh, ominous when it comes to uh, overtaking manoeuvres, as you've seen in, uh, in real life. As Magnussen makes a nice clean manoeuvre, though, on the Toros to take away. Uh, 12th place away from the uh, Russian. We're now trying to chase down the uh, Toros. We come through turn five and turn six. But a little bit of a mistake on the exit of the corner. Got, got a bit too greedy with the power. And that's going to hand 14th place on a silver platter to Nico Holkenberg, who goes up the inside of us into turn seven and uh, turn eight. Let's go on board with a replay and just show you how pretty straightforward it was for Holkenberg right here. We go a little bit wide, getting, a, getting two wheels on the gravel. And that's going to cost us a load of speed. And Holkenberg says, thank you very much. I will see you later. I will take that position away from you. But anyways, we're now on to uh, lap number five again. We've got lap number five. Uh, it's one lap later. And see, Holkenberg is now trying to get find his way past Fiat as well. But uh, the Constantino effect of the guys breaking in front of him meant that we had a potential, had a look around the outside into uh, turn nine there. But uh, unfortunately for us, we weren't able to uh, make a maneuver stick. As we now go on uh, to, towards the end of lap number five. Looks like Holkenberg is going to get two drivers oh he's got past Fiat he's now gone past the uh, Haas of Magnussen as we now head up to the DRS zone to end lap five we may have an opportunity to overtake Fiat and actually get an overtake done in this uh, Grand Prix as we now try and go and take two drivers into turn one here Fiat's trying to get some revenge on uh, Magnussen I think on the right on the outside there and um, 
He managed to try to uh, give him free out enough space on the inside, which he managed to do so, and we were able to make the move. I think Magnuson's got some sort of uh, engine issues or something like that, because he was pulling away from the, this uh, little group before uh, being reeled back in again, as we now look at the replay and see it's three abreast going into uh, turn number one, but Magnuson's the one that loses out the most as we uh, overtake uh, Kvyat. It looks like Jolene Palmer's also trying to get past the, uh, the Dane as well, so it could be three positions lost for Tay Magnus in the space of... Uh, three corners or so as we go up the um, as we go past Kvyat. Now going on board one lap later as you can see a very nice uh, rear wing shot as uh, coming, as coming across the start finish line. Kvyat looks like looks like he wants to have the position back from us. He's now got the DRS in operation and we don't have any unfortunately due to the fact that uh, Holkenberg is uh, miles up the road. Hamilton exits the pits already for after his uh, first pit. So we're able to uh, fend off Kvyat though by having the inside line to turn on and making sure he ran deliberately deep into that corner just so he had no chance of uh, sticking his nose up the inside into turn two. So uh, we're able to uh, maintain position now. We're currently up in ninth place for now, but that's mainly due to the fact that we've had several drives come into for their uh, first of uh, probably two or plus potentially three stiffer pits. We come up towards uh, turn one. That's Vettel trying to get out, exit the pits in front of us. And based on what happened in Singapore, we obviously we had, a little, had a little bit of a ding-dong scrap with the Ferraris. We try and go up the inside of the uh, Ferrari into turn two, a bit very similar to... Uh, what uh, the two, him, him and Mark Webber were doing back in uh, 2013 with the two, when they were both a part of the Red Bull team. As uh, Vettel looks like he's managed to uh, make the maneuver stick, though, and he's now going to start pulling away from us with the, uh, the fresher, newer super soft tyres and the superior uh, car speed compared to us. We now come on got to a few laps later. We now have Valtteri Bottas having uh, fancying his chances to try and overtake us down the straight here. Let's see if we can try and hold off the Mercedes just for a little bit. I'm pretty much, very much doubt we're going to, uh, going to be able to hold on to this position for very long, but we're able to defend him off right there at the start of lap 10, so he's going to have to spend well, another lap behind us, which is uh, kind of damaging his race, because I think he's on either a two or maybe potentially a three-stop strategy, so he really needs to get past us and pull out a huge gap in order for, us to, in order for him to uh, try and get back into this. We've got a little bit of lag, unfortunately, on this uh, little bit of this... Um, of this, of this video recorded, but we were able to hold the position around the outside. But it looks like Bottas might have an opportunity though as he comes to start lap number 11 here. We're on board with a different uh, camera angle here. Bottas trying to go around the outside. We've got the two Red Bulls also fancying their chances against us. They're also on, uh, I think, a two stop strategy right about now. Bottas has managed to get past us. But look at Ricardo trying to go completely around the outside, then take the inside line for turn two. Very good maneuver from the Australian and very. Uh, Vintage, I would say, from the uh, Australian. Very opportunistic right there. This is, let's have a quick look at the replay and see exactly how Ricardo did this. He just broke, broke a little bit later than most. I tried to fend him off around the outside here, but I just give him the space just in case he does try a maneuver up the inside. And with the superior super soft tyres and the superior grip in that Red Bull, he's able to uh, make the maneuver stick. As we now go on to uh, lap two, and now got the other Red Bull of Max Verstappen trying to do a similar maneuver on Ricardo. But this time I wise up to it though, and I force him deliberately. Uh, a little bit wide, such that he then has to then contend with, I think, Felipe Massa, who is the uh, next car behind. He looks like he's managed to uh, get in front of the Red Bull for now, but it looks like uh, Verstappen might have a little bit more traction. So those, those two go side by side and head up towards uh, turn four. Now onto lap 13. Verstappen trying to do a similar manoeuvre again, but once again, we're going to probably um, fend them off the same sort of way, deliberately going wide into the corner, such that he has no chance of taking that inside line. Learned from, from the mistake I made with uh, Ricardo, but anyways... Um, as Verstappen goes side by side with uh, Massa once again. The main aim for me is to try and see if we can get Felipe in front of Verstappen here, because I'm pretty sure I can fend off Felipe in the, uh, what's it called, um, in the uh, downforce section, because the Williams car is not so good in terms of downforce compared to Red Bull. But as you can see there, Verstappen tried a little bit of a late maneuver on us this time. I was trying to catch that, but unfortunately, unfortunately for him, we were wise to it. And again, he's having to go side by side with the Williams. It looks like the Williams may have the inside line for this particular, for turn four here, and might take the position away from Verstappen as we enter the uh, corner. It looks like Max is able to uh, hold him off just for now, though. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really close between all three of us at the moment as we now go on to uh, one lap later. And Mac, Max is now going to try and go up the inside into the last corner and take the position away from Verstappen and then try and overtake us on the main straight as we've now also got another car joining the front. I think that's uh, the Haas of Grosjean, but I'm not 100% sure on that front who it is. As Massa now tries to uh, use the slipstream and the DRS and the superior Mercedes power down the straight here to go around the outside of us. But we're going to cut to the inside 
again, making sure he has to go the long way around and we make sure that he has no chance of getting past us in that uh, second corner. But anyway, so now going back on board of our, to our point of view in terms of the uh, onboard cameras, we now have Master Trust going up the inside of us into uh, the final corner on lap 15. But thankfully for us, though, it is our pit stop lap to take off these uh, medium tyres and get onto, I think, the yellow wall soft tyres because will, those will definitely get to the end of the race, hopefully, as long as uh, no uh, sort of issues uh, happen to us in terms of tyre or any punctures or anything like that. But uh, fingers crossed we can get a, a good pit stop out here and we can uh, rejoin in a reasonable position and start closing the gap on some of the uh, guys that are still out there on um, less fresh tyres. But let's have a see, have a look and see what sort of pit stop we get from the McKitts pit stop accounts. We're not pretty close to actually getting another full competency, actually, due to the fact that we've done so many pit stops uh, throughout uh, our career at the moment. But uh, anyways, we now rejoin it in uh, 17th place. We do rejoin behind Magnuson and Super Soft Tires, but, uh, and also just ahead of uh, Van Dorn and Super Soft Tires. So I'm pretty sure those guys are going to have to stop again, so, whereas we will have to stop for the rest of the race if everything goes well. So we now come to the uh, start of our laps in the team. We're overtaking a couple of drivers right here who are ace in the pits right now. That's the Force India of Paris. We could go side by side with the Force India into turn one and turn two. I think that's also Massa rejoining ahead of us in uh, 14th place at the moment. But uh, Massa is now going to be under threat, I think, due to the fact that he's on the medium tyre and myself and Perez are on those yellow wall soft tyres. And as joy and short, lo and behold, all at the end of lap 18, we managed to close up right up to the uh, back of the Williams here. And we have the DRS in operation, potentially could have a manoeuvre up the inside here, despite the fact that of our inferior uh, straight line speeds. Try to go up the inside of Massa. It looks like he's locked up as well because that's going to allow Perez to overtake him as well. It looks like Perez is going to try and fancy a move up the inside. We do go a little bit wide onto turn, into turn two though and Perez now has an opportunity to, to go complete round our outside here uh, into turn three as we now head up towards turn four. It looks like he's made the maneuver stick for now but in order for us to get this position back we're going to have to go for a late break maneuver into turn four at the end of the second first sector sorry and as we go up the inside kind of quite forcefully just to make sure we uh take that position away. We're up into P7 now due to, to uh, some uh, more drivers making the pits. So let's go on board with the replay. As you can see there, Massa locking up massively and that is the reason why he lost out to Perez and now Perez, as you can see, we had a little bit of a, um, a mistake into turn two right there and that's going to allow Perez to uh, pull up on the side and actually have a much superior traction and therefore take the position as we head up towards turn four. But we were a little bit more aggressive on the brakes this time around. He does give us the space and it's very close to being a, a contact between us two. But uh, thankfully, though, there wasn't any as we're now on to uh, the end of lap 19 at the final uh, at the final call. We've got some yellow flag that I think is in play. Someone has retired from the race. I'm not entirely sure who is. We fend off Perez for now. It is Jolie and Palmer that's actually retired based off that uh, notification right there as we start lap 20. Perez may have an opportunity, though, to go round the right side here. And we've also got Grosjean potentially having a fight here. And that's Bottas also acing the pit lane here so we could have easily had three or even four abreast into the, into the first corner but thankfully though no sort of it no sort of instance there right there which is uh important therefore means that everyone's able to continue and there wasn't really any contact between us as we go on board with Bottas this is exactly what he saw as he uh exited the pits very I think he made a little bit of contact with Grosjean as he uh exited the pits right there it was really close between all four, all four of us actually in terms of uh central contact but this is the replay on board of, of with uh Julian Palmer, unfortunately for the British driver who scored his first ever F1 points at this circuit in 2016, is has parked up and is now out of the race. We go back on board to our, our point of view at the end of lap 20. Perez again trying to make a maneuver around the outside of us into the final corner, but I'm expecting him to uh, fight back, have another go into the first corner here as we now go on board to a uh, different angle as uh, Perez tries to go around the outside of us into a turn. We've also got Grosjean in this scrap and also Bottas is also is going to try and join the fun here as we manage to fend off the Force India. But it looks like Grosjean is going to try and be opportunistic and try and go around the outside of Perez and then take the inside line for turn three. It looks like the Haas guy driver has managed to do it and it looks like we could have a little scrap between ourselves and the American team considering our positions in the Constructors Championship. Look how close it is between us two at the moment as we now try and go up the inside of Grosjean as he tried to go around the outside of us into the, the final corner. But thankfully, we were able to fend him off and we were able to uh, have a little bit of breathing space as we um, start lap 22 as uh, Grosjean, I think, is going to be uh, under pressure from either Perez or potentially from Bottas as we uh, make sure that we didn't have to uh, worry about defending too much from that particular uh, 
straight as we now come to the start of lap 23 though Grosjean is right back with us and he's going to try and go around the outside here but we've got a bit of a whack though from the uh, Mercedes of Bottas who seems to have uh, lost some sort of uh, bodywork or somewhere I think he might have tapped his front wing into the back of our uh, cars Bottas now trying to go around the outside of us we kind of force him out wide though it looks like a Grosjean's lost, I think, a couple of places, a couple of places as well, which is a bit of a shame. We also have a problem with our DRS. I don't know whether that's uh, linked to the fact that Bottas slammed into the back of us due to, the fact, due to his uh, front wing clashing with our rear wing. This is a ball with Bottas here. It looks like he seems to think that um, we, we all of a sudden, break, set, quote, brake test him, but I don't think we're just not, we're just not that fast on the straight compared to that Mercedes power. And also, look how much contact there is between myself, hit Bottas, and also Grosjean. That's the reason why Grosjean got out to drive. We now come on to uh, cut to the end of lap number 23. Bosses has now got a damage, slightly damaged front wing. He's still carrying on with a, a pretty good uh, race car under him, despite the fact that uh, he's got some damage. But anyways, we're going to force him around the outside here, potentially to uh, be come under pressure again from uh, Rojon, but looks like he's going to be able to fend him off due to the fact that he has DRS in operation. Looks like Perez is going to also make a maneuver on Rojon to take that position back away from the uh, Astrom. So it's myself Followed by Bottas and then Perez and Grosjean as Bottas tries to go round the outside of us like he did earlier on in the race. But this time around, we're going to break a little bit later than him with the, uh, the yellow wall soft tyres, force him out wide. And now that will mean uh, Perez is going, to is going to have a fancy uh, around the, fancy chances around the outside of the uh, Mercedes. They go side by side as they head up towards turn three. I think Bottas is able to fend him off for now at least, though, as we now cut to the... Uh, end of lap number 25 stop lap 26 only a couple of laps to go here but one concern i do have is the fact that apparently the weather is going to start changing as we head towards the, the closing stages of the race as Bottas tries to go again around the outside but once again we're able to fend them off and looks like Paris might might have been able to uh, steal a position away but it looks like Bottas again has, been, has managed to fend off the uh before Mercedes power falls in, as Bottas again is going to try and potentially make a move up the inside. He may have made more contact with us as we head up towards turn one. And there is now contact again with the uh, Mercedes, with him running it into the back of us here. And I'm pretty sure now he's pretty much wrecked his front wing. And he's going to have to make a uh, additional pit stop here. And he's going to probably drop out of the points based on the fact there was a pretty, pretty large queue forming behind due to the fact that I've been able to fend them off here. I think he goes to the inside a little bit later than normal, but. Boss decided to uh, start braking and then braking and then turn, turning away from me. So I think that was kind of a mistake from uh, Bottas's, Bottas's point of view. He should have really moved to the left if he wanted to uh, avoid hitting me prior to um, the braking zone. But anyways, he's now going to be suffering with severe uh, downforce. As you can see, we've managed to build up a little bit of a gap between ourselves and that field due to the fact that Bottas is struggling with that front wing. I'm pretty sure... He has to come in though at the, on the final lap, but he may not. It depends because we've only got two laps remaining, or one lap remaining as soon as I cross the line. But yes, he has come into the pits here, and it looks like Perez is going to hit the Harrods seventh. It looks like we might be in a secure sixth place. But meanwhile, on the final lap, as you can see, we've got some rain now starting to fall. Perez has a little bit of a mistake out of the uh, turn nine, turn nine corner. Grosjean's going to take advantage and go up the inside of um, the Force India right there, which is a little bit of an annoyance to us. That means Haas is going to get two more points on the board in the Constructors' Championship. But anyways, we're going to still hold on to a, an impressive sixth place after and bounce back from a bit of a disappointing Singapore Grand Prix after we had to uh, deal with a front wing change. But anyways, we've got back into back to uh, basics. We've got some points on the board. Sixth place. team today so here they come now out onto the podium wherever you go anywhere in the world the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today it's Ferrari on the top step once more And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Well, the lead at the top has come down after a poor result for our points leader. Moving on to the driver of the day then, 
Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? From my point of view, it would have to be the Sauber driver. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern-day Formula 1. On to the constructors then. Ferrari extend their lead at the top of the championship. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie-down, I think. Thanks for joining us, and goodbye until the next race. So confirmation of the results on the Malaysian Grand Prix. We've got Vettel winning the race with Hamilton second, Ricardo for third, Raikkonen all the way down in fourth. So more points dropped for the uh, championship leader. Verstappen in fifth, myself in sixth, Grosjean seventh, Perez in eighth, Ocon in ninth, and Massa taking up taking the uh, final points for Williams in tenth. And as you see right there, Bottas finishing all the way down in 17th place due to the uh, extra pit stops. He ended up making four pit stops today due to the fact that he was on a initially on a three-stop strategy and then had to make that extra stop, extra stop for that uh, front wing. As we now have a look and see how that affects the Drivers' Championship. In terms of the uh, lead, the gap is now under a race victory between uh, Raikkonen and also Vettel. So it's really now going to come down to the wire with the uh, just five rounds remaining of the season. The only real change in terms of position, though, is uh, Romain Grosjean moving up into ninth place at the expense of Nico Hulkenberg due to the fact that he scored seventh place today and Nico Hulkenberg failed to score a point in this Grand Prix. As we have a look at the Constructors' Championship, standings all remain the same else everywhere, but uh, we do move a little bit closer to Haas due to the fact that we've scored uh, two more points than them, but uh, it's going to be, again, going to be a nip and tuck battle as we head into the uh, final five rounds of the season. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all for round number 16, which will be the Japanese Grand Prix at one of my favorite circuits on the calendar. This is, and it's a very uh, historic circuit overall, the uh, Suzuka circuit. So until then, see you later.